Hello, I'm James Caldwell, and this is an American Vintage II 1961 Stratocaster in three-tone sunburst. This is a left-handed model, but if you're a right-handed player, don't worry, Fender has you covered as they make them right-handed also. In this video, I'm going to try and convince you and myself that this is the finest Stratocaster Fender has made in over 60 years. Could it be true? We'll see. I picked this guitar up at Southpaw Guitar Shop in Houston uh, a few weeks back. And uh, what I did was I took two guitars with me and I traded. And I got this and uh, had a bunch of leftover store credit. I went back and I got something else which we'll talk about in another video. The two guitars that I took in for trade were both Stratocasters. Uh, one was my 2004 American Deluxe, which I've had since 2006. So that would be 17 years. The other was a Fender American Original 1950s model, which I ordered direct from Fender last year. And so I only had that guitar for six or seven months, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. During my brief existence on this planet, this is the fifth Stratocaster that I've owned. And let me tell you about the first four. Stratocaster number one was a 1978 Stratocaster that I purchased in 1980 when I was in high school. I went down to the local music store, it was Parker Music in Pasadena, Texas, and I told the salesman, I want to get a left-handed Gibson SG. And he looked at me and said, hmm, I can get you a Stratocaster like that. And I said, okay. In those days, the guitar players that I really listened to and admired a lot were Richie Blackmore, and David Gilmore and other Stratocaster players. And at the same time, I was into ACDC. Uh, Angus Young I thought was fantastic, and he always played a Gibson SG. I also admired the guys in the original Alice Cooper band, and uh, they also were known for playing SGs. This is the Love It to Death album on vinyl. So really, I could have gone either way. I liked Strat players and I liked SG players at that time. So uh, I said yes to the deal and I had to wait a couple of months till they uh, found it. It was laying around in a warehouse somewhere. When it came in, it was brand new, still had all the stickers and papers on it. And the serial number indicated it was made in 1978, but I didn't think anything of it at that time. It was a new Stratocaster and I was just a kid and I was happy. What I do remember about that guitar, and I did own that guitar for 12 or 13 years, I believe, and I played it a lot in those days. It was uh, late 70s. It had that three bolt neck plate, which really wasn't a very good design. It also had the tilt adjustment. There was a little hole in the neck plate and you could stick an Allen wrench in there and you could adjust the angle of the neck. I never messed with that and I really don't think that was a good idea either. Also, I hadn't owned that guitar, but probably just three or four weeks, and the tremolo arm had snapped off in my hand with the threaded portion stuck down in the uh, bridge plate. Anyway, my opinion of the late 70s Stratocasters were they weren't really all that good. I parted with that guitar in the early 90s, and uh, I think I was playing a Kramer or something for several years. Stratocaster number two came around 1999 or 2000. I'm not exact on this, but I went down to Southpaw Guitars and I came out with a Fender American Standard Stratocaster. I remember it had a transparent red finish. Uh, pretty sure it had an ash body. It could have been alder, but I'm not 100% on that. It did have the maple neck, maple fretboard. And uh, what I remember about that guitar is that they had sprayed the clear coat over the frets. So when you got a new one and you played it for a couple of weeks, the finish was chipping off around the frets, just over the frets as you'd play the guitar. It was kind of an annoyance, uh, but it didn't impede the playing at all. You just kind of took it for what it was. I only had that guitar about a year and I went and traded for something else. Then Stratocaster number three. I went back to Southpaw with whatever I had at the time, and I traded for an American Deluxe Stratocaster. The serial number indicated it was 2004. It was a brand new guitar. It was a beautiful instrument. And I was very impressed with the improvements that Fender had made since uh, the 70s and my experience with the 78 Stratocaster. Everything about the, the modern Stratocaster was better. And that guitar did have the tapered neck joint so that it wasn't so blocky here. You could 
you could get your hand up to the higher frets a little easier. It had S1 switching, which means there was a button in the volume knob and you could push it down and it would change the wiring of all the pickups. It's kind of fancy. It had the vintage noiseless pickups, which were pretty good. And uh, it had locking tuners. It had the two-point tremolo bridge with really nice saddles, pop-in tremolo arm. Everything about that guitar was really first class. So why did I get rid of it? <laughs> Stratocaster number four I purchased just last year and I still owned the 2004 American Deluxe. I still had it, but I was looking to get something different. So I ordered direct from Fender an American Original 50s. They don't make those anymore. They were recently discontinued and replaced by the American Vintage 2 series. But anyway, this was an American Original 50s Stratocaster. It had the white finish, it had an ash body, maple fretboard, a really thick neck, uh, which I thought I wanted, but actually it didn't really mesh with me. And departing from the original 50s guitars, it had a nine and a half inch radius, which was fine, and a five-way switch, which was again another modern feature. It also included the chrome bridge cover, which I could never get it to fit on. So I had the original 50s Stratocaster for less than a year, and I decided after much careful thought to take both of the Stratocasters I had down to Southpaw Guitar Shop and see what uh, they might offer me in trade. And uh, they were fair on their, on their prices. So I came out with this, and I still had quite a bit of store credit left over. So I had to think about that for a few weeks. I went back and got something else, which we'll talk about in another video. Now, what do I like about this guitar? Suppose the main thing was I'd been wanting a vintage style Stratocaster, which is the reason I ordered the original 50s model from Fender. What I like about the vintage style is that these guitars have the nitrocellulose lacquer finish, which is the original old style finish, instead of the more modern polyurethane finishes. This guitar also has vintage 61 pickups, which is kind of cool. Um, and to be honest, these tuning machines, though they're not modern locking tuners, but the original uh, Fender, let's see if I can get that in there. <laughs> the original Fender slotted tuning machines uh, are really a breeze to change strings and they lock the string in really well. So this is my first Stratocaster that has an alder body. I don't really have much of an opinion about that. Also, this is my first Stratocaster to sport a rosewood fretboard. They call this a slab rosewood fretboard, which is the uh, early 60s style, which means it's uh, the rosewood is flat on the bottom. Many of the more modern rosewood fretboards are curved, and so it's like a laminate laid across the maple, but this is a flat bottom piece, and they call that slab rosewood. Uh, the other cool thing about it is it doesn't have the skunk stripe down the back of the neck. Yes, thank you. <laughs> It's a little thing, but I always wanted a Stratocaster that didn't have that, I think it's walnut that they use as the filler in the back, but just maple in the back. Uh, other notable appointments are that it has clay dots. Wow. And the uh, vintage style six screw tremolo system. Of course, it's a 21 fret neck. Uh, let's talk about this rosewood. I've heard a lot of people saying that on a guitar of this price point that they weren't impressed with the rosewood that Fender is using. And um, I, th I don't have a problem with it. Uh, what I've seen on these guitars lately is that the rosewood has uh, kind of reddish streaks in it, so it's not purely dark. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I think it's a pretty piece of wood on there, to be honest with you, and it goes well with the, this finish. And while we're on that subject, I'm just going to show you. Uh, here's my 2020 Les Paul. That's uh, a Les Paul standard 1950s model. And the rosewood neck on this, it's kind of very brown, but still it, it has light streaks through it. It doesn't have the reddish color that the fender has. But that's what Gibson's been using in recent years. I wouldn't say it's any better. For those that are complaining about not having a nice dark piece of rosewood, on my classical guitar here, this has an ebony fretboard. An ebony, 
but it's not rosewood. And as you can see, the fretboard is very dark. It's practically black, which is why it's called ebony. Uh, and this guitar, by the way, that's got a rosewood back and sides. And you can see it's got light and dark streaks throughout. And this is a really nice piece of Brazilian rosewood. But this guitar also it did include in the case the chrome bridge cover. And unlike the original 50s that I had where I couldn't put it on, this one fits on relatively easily. And the only problem I have with it is that um, it, co it comes off very easily also. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody uses those, so it doesn't really matter. What's up with that fender? Okay, and this guitar also does have a seven and a quarter inch radius, which might be a turnoff for some people. Listen to lots of reviews on YouTube and so forth, and people talk about seven and a quarter inch versus nine and a half or ten or whatever, saying that it doesn't really matter if the guitar is set up right, it should play just fine. But you know, seven and a quarter inch radius is quite rounded. And um, I've adjusted the action little by little, raising up, especially the, the first string. And like right in here. Okay, there it is. I can get a full step out of it. But if I try and go for the minor third, it's choking out. So again, I might have to raise it slightly more. Uh, just as it's crossing over the higher portion of the fretboard, it, it, it does hit a higher fret. Second string, not a problem. Of course, third string, you're already in the highest portion of the fretboard, so it doesn't... I guess pulling down on the sixth string, not a problem. One more thing I want to point out, and this applies to the left-handed player only. That is that Fender continually wires their left-handed guitars so that with volume and tone, 10 is off and one is on. So you're rotating the dial counterclockwise to increase volume and clockwise to uh, turn it down. To my mind, that seems backwards because on an amplifier, you rotate clockwise to increase volume and you rotate counterclockwise to decrease volume. However, I kind of get it because if you're a player that likes to work the knobs as you're playing, uh, then it's the same as it would be for a right-handed player. That is that if you stick your pinky down here and pull up, you're increasing volume. If you want to back off, you're pushing down with your pinky. So you have the same kind of motion that a right-handed player would have. So it makes sense. They could put left-handed knobs on so that one is one and 10 is 10, but they don't. Minor little grievance. So have I convinced you that this is the finest Stratocaster Fender has produced in over 60 years? Probably not. I don't think I've convinced myself that either. However, it is a nice guitar. And I'm happy with it. I think what it boils down to is, what are your preferences? Do you want a modern guitar? To be honest with you, I think the current American Ultra series Stratocasters are probably the best Stratocasters Fender has made just off their regular production line. A lot of great uh, features, great appointments on those guitars. However, if you're like me and you want something with a little more vintage authenticity, then this is a great guitar to go with. Uh, no complaints. It's going to be with me for many years to come, I'm sure, and uh, we're going to get along just great. Well, I think that brings us to the end of this video. In the comments below, let me know what you think about these guitars and what's your favorite Stratocaster. Also, if you enjoyed this video at all, please like and subscribe and stay tuned to my channel for more guitar-related videos. Till next time, keep on a pickin'. <laughs>